it was very tricky and she's um, I guess you could say not a particularly friendly person she gets very short with people so yeah it's been hard on everyone who's caring for her she would swear at the the uh, the NHS carers so uh, it wasn't the greatest but uh, she's now gone so kind of a relief for everybody in some ways probably have about well we've still got 23 three thousand liters of flour in the mill oh, just you drop there oh I've got more behind me <laughs> this a little so I think it's blocking one of the spawn points on the pallets there we go that will load quicker If I hold it in the air, it'll disappear. There you go. How are we doing? 7,000 left. Okay. Now 1,600. So 1,000. One more crate should spawn. Hello. We have 46,999 litres of flour. And I tell you, this, this is... This is maple boosted flour mill, not a... Uh, a levelled up flour mill. So it's still level one. Um, but it has all three... Had all four streams running overnight before we ran out of flour. So the amount it produces is quite excessive. Um, if I wanted more storage capacity, I could level it up, but it would process it faster, which means I would still have to make as many trips. Um, so it's just easier to uh, leave it at level one. It's going to produce all the flour that the, ba that the level two bakery can cope with and then some. Um, now, because we can't keep the flour mill in production for the entire year, it does mean we're not going to have excess flour. Um, but I am only going to be able to run the bakery for about six months this year before we run out. And since we're down the bakery, I will grab whatever's bread's available and sell it. Although I did that yesterday, I think. Yep, still five crates of the stuff, so... Uh
And again, more income. Not from this particular job, but... Could be a plan. Move the truck over first. And we'll get the bakery workers to transfer the bread to the truck. There you go, that might work, tea bag. So yeah, after last week's light um, children visit, because the girl was up with grandma with her older siblings. The youngest child wasn't invited, so he came to stay with us for at least until the 2nd of July. He then went home. Um, all of the kids are with a friend this week, so they're not coming to visit us this week. And then next weekend they have summer camp, so they won't be here next weekend either. So, a couple of quiet weekends. Um, rest of the family, Mrs. Osa's sleeping, Teenage Osa's sleeping, and they both have to go and clean the church later on today at some time, but no worries. Mrs. Osa has a key now, so she can go anytime she wants. Okay, so a couple of thousand for the bread. Back in the cab. And we'll hightail it back to the yard. I think I might have cleaned this this time. I don't know why it gets so dirty when you think... It doesn't go in fields, it just drives on the road. I suppose it does go in fields when I do uh, things like that. <laughs> and I managed to get the grass cut on Thursday. Hey, hello. Okay now. On Thursday night this week after work. Wow, I couldn't have done a better job of hitting that post if I'd tried. Which is good, because today it's expecting to be scattered thunderstorms for most of the day. Which is probably going to mean, um, or may mean, that I need to shut down the stream if it gets really bad. And again, let's crash into some more wooden posts. Let's try and keep the speed down. That's usually a better plan. But it does mean I might not be cutting lumber again this weekend, because I don't like using power tools when they're getting rained on. Oops. Although I do have a couple of uh, woodworking jobs in the basement that does not involve me going outside and cutting lumber. I have potentially one more, or no, I've got the lumber for one bench and I need to go and buy the lumber for another two. Maybe. Maybe three. I'm really undecided about what the bottom end of the layout's going to be. Oh. Made it. Oh. 
Alrighty, let's clean this thing off, which is looking decidedly unkempt. Okay, that's a bit better. We'll clean the back. And good. Oh, it looks like the John Deere is finished. That's not necessarily a surprising thing. Well, wow. you really. You really are that close. Wow. Okay. Okay. John Deere's done. Let's uh, run around this field. See how the edges look. I pretty much did that edge. And because I'm doing this mostly with workers, uh, they will not exceed the edge of the field. So if the mower ends up, say, here, that right mower unit will not do any work. But for the headlands, we will uh, likely grab a little bit from the edge. Okay, down, on, on. Thank you. Bit and then go. And I missed a bit back there. Uh, okay, well, exceed the edge of the map of the field a little bit. 91, 90 degrees, that's probably as good as we're going to get it. And actually, that's looking okay except for the last bit directly in front of us have the front mower. Let's fold it up. Oh, you're seriously telling me, yes, there is a fence post right there. Done. No. We can fold the back up. So, that is all of the grass cut except a little blob there. Stop. And we'll jump over to this dude. And then get this guy started on tedding. Now, I need to set this one up as push it straight to hay. I think base game is good enough. It will take what we have here, conditioned grass, and make it hay. I can turn that off and that's working fine. Uh, back up. Alrighty, where are we going next? I don't know. So, 68 is there. Didn't we have two? 106 is over there. I could go down to that one and then come back through 68. Or I could go through 68 and come back to that one. 68 is straight down there by the looks of it so straight past the cornfield and on the left let's do that way 
How's the tractor? The tractor definitely needs a service, so we will do that before we head out across the world. And um, that is conditioned grass. You know what I can do with conditioned grass? I can wrap it, except I don't have a separate wrapper. Any bales in there? No. And there you go, conditioned grass meets the uh, animal's full food requirements because it's direct grazing, or in this case, indirect grazing. We will jump in the cap for this trip again. Because it's kind of mid-summer, actually. Let's go over here and see what we've got here. We have a lot of straw. Uh, 13 grass silage bales, 57 11,000 litre straw bales. So I would like to get some more grass silage. We'll probably get grass silage from our two fields on the final cut of the year. At least that's the plan. The whole crop silage, we will put some in the... Uh, the robot feeder. What I'll try and do is balance it out so there is as much whole crop silage as there is hay in the robot feeder. We will, we will possibly get another contract out of uh, the field that we're currently tedding. So that would be a useful thing. Again, I'm not sure what it'll end up being, whether it'll be grass silage or um, oh, I didn't turn hard enough. Uh, whether it'll be grass silage or hay, I don't know. But we'll see how that works out later. I think, truth be told, I might be able to forage this stuff. Um, yeah. Growth stage 5 of 6, I can forage this if I want to. That would give us access to maize silage next month, I guess. Okay, jump in here. And we will unfold that, lower it. Unfold that, lower it. Uh, turn it on, back one on and let's go motoring so this field not quite so easy because it's just not square it's not on a line we're at 157 degrees which workers not going to be happy with As I said, leftover hay from the top field. Actually, I'll do this backwards. Um, when we get around to delivering the hay, I will deliver it from these two fields first and then do the top field last. <coughs> that way, um, we shouldn't end up with uh, or we'll end up with all of the bonus bales on our top field rather than on the 
uh, these fields out here. So we will be able to transfer them directly to the cow feeder, which is a good plan, I think. It'll make us able to determine how much whole crop silage. I'm thinking we need as much whole crop. I did not fix the tractor. Why didn't I do that? Because he didn't do that. Um, yeah, so what am I saying there? Um, yeah, I'll just put, yeah, I'll put all the the hay in the robot that we get off that big field and then I will also nice um, put as much whole crop silage from the fields local to that yard into there to balance it out so there's approximately the same amount you know, give or take a thousand, two thousand, three thousand liters, because we'll be putting bales in in both instances. Um, and currently, the robot food is not balanced at all. strip down the middle of the road because that just won't work at all. Just want to cut that bit there. And then I could do this with the GPS I guess. I'm not gonna bother. I think we can do this fairly efficiently with a free drive. But again, I do want to get as much as I can from this field. And then and saving the bonus bales for the other field, or for the field local to our farm, just makes it easier on transportation. I don't have to go running all over the world. I'm fairly certain they probably all deliver to the same delivery point. That bit, and... We go. Oh. So I'm thinking I'm going to use. I'm really going out of my way to use some different equipment for the move up to Scotland. I've watched a couple of disturbed simulations videos based in Glenleith and. It's seriously hard mode. Part of the issue is the days are seriously short. So nine o'clock in the morning, it is still dark. Um, and when you're streaming, you don't really want to do too much work during the night hours. And it will be dark during harvest, during all of the times. So, uh, yeah, the only time it's going to be, that's, the, and the trade-off is during summer, so over the course of June, July, August, we are going to see sunlight at up to 11 o'clock at night, so we're going to be able to run long summer days, but the winter days, especially the harvest time, is going to be very restrictive or I'm going to be doing harvesting at night time. I, tr I don't really want to do too much pitch black work because it is pitch black. 
So all we'll have to go on is the tractor light. Now one possibility there is... Um, I've used it before. The Agco 1000. Um, we used that as a um, challenger in... Oakfield Farm? Oakfield Farm. That has an absolutely amazing spread of lights on it. Um, a lot of other tractors, they're very limited to sort of front, back and almost nothing on the sides. And well, I miss that clump entirely. We'll come back for that in a minute. Actually, lots of issues there. Uh, yeah, well, we'll play around with equipment, but I'm going to try and use some things that are a little bit different. At least for me. probably use some things from the forage DLC because well I've got them and I really haven't used them um, I may use some Vermeer stuff but that's not really set in stone we have used the Vermeer rake before um, and I'm not a fan of the self-propelled baler I'm not a fan of many self-propelled vehicles on a startup, primarily because I'm buying a very piece, expensive piece of kit with an engine, and it's a single-use item. So you get a potato harvester; it's the only thing you can do with it is to harvest potatoes. You could get yourself um, a forage harvester. And the only thing you can do with that is forage. Um, same with regular harvesters, although it's difficult to get out of that. Um, okay, how do we get out of here? I don't know. Let's um, take a look at the world. If we go out that way, We'll go through that yard, come out there, we'll go to the store, and then we'll head on to 106. That seems like a fair way to go, so I've immediately forgotten where I'm going. We go out this way and round 90. That's a plan. 